uh, and welcome to uh, Pahana School of Computing. Um, um, we are going to start with the grade 10 information and communication technology. So let me briefly go through what we have done last time. Uh, there are nine topics we have to cover in grade 10, right? Starting from ICT, uh, information and communication technology. So there we will actually briefly look at what information technology is and how information technology uses in different fields and so on. So that's what our first topic. Then we will look at the basic components in a computer, especially we focus on the hardware components. Uh, then data representation, we will discuss how things are represented inside the computer. Then basics in uh, logic gates, which means the basics in electronics. Uh, we will learn what are the basic building blocks of electronics. So that's the topic uh, under logic gates. Then operating systems, which means we'll start software from there. And you know, we will have Windows, Linux, Mac, Macintosh. There are different operating systems. And I hope uh, you are familiar with the Windows operating system. So we will discuss uh, the main tasks of, of uh, operating system and how it interact with the other types of software, which we call uh, like uh, other additional software we will have, right? Uh, and then uh, we will look at the uh, focus on the, uh, the software for different purposes. Uh, uh, for example, Word, uh, and then uh, Excel, PowerPoint, and finally access uh, all these under different topics. So that's the main plan for grade 10. Right, the first thing we discuss uh, data and information, right? So Dolina, since you have there, can you tell me what data is? Uh, data is meaningless. Data is meaningless, yes. What is it? Bhagya? Do not bear a meaning when standing alone, sir. Yes. So when you take it as it is, there's, if there's no meaning, we call it data. But uh, then what is information, Dolina? Process data. Yes, it's process data. When you process, as you said earlier, it will be meaningful. Now I'm going to reshare what we have shared with you last time since Bag is new today. And so we, if you, if you look at the weather report, for example, right? I'm used to use this, right? So if I uh, really want to know today's weather, so I can check on uh, weather on weather.com. And here is the results what we will get. Uh, we will have a weather forecast. So it says, for example, today, it's uh, partly cloudy. Uh, currently temperature is 24 uh, Celsius. So that's the current situation, but it also predicts what will be the coming you know, days, the temperature. Now, for example, let me ask this from Bhagya. Now, let's say you want to go on a trip. Which date you are going to choose? A fair day. Exactly, right? Now, for hopefully these couple of days, we don't have any rainy days, so you can go anytime. But if you like needs, uh, you know, the sun, and if you are going to, you know, make sure that uh, you are going to play in a playground where like open space, then maybe you can choose on Wednesday and Thursday because it's, uh, says, you know, uh, it's sunny, right? So likewise, we can make decisions based on the information given here. So who gave this information? It's coming from weather data, weather.com, right? So what are the data components you think to create that weather forecast? Dolina? Now they are predicting uh, the weather forecast for the coming week. The my question is like, what are what is data there? 
what might be the data the history of data yes historical in uh, you know uh, data about what bagya right um so to get uh, the weather forecast for the coming week usually we cap talk a historical data when we say historical data the rainfall data uh, the temperature changes the winds right all these uh, and then humidity things like that we are going to keep record and then we will put this into a computer system which will give us uh, the predictions right so that's how it works so let's move on to the topic we'll go back to the topic so this is exactly what we are going to look at here so what is data and what is information and what is the difference right now for example if you take this right back here what do you think about this whatever given here what is it can you make any guesses yes bagya some information regarding yes there are some names there are some numbers there what are they yes dolina marks oh, yeah I you can it's... say marks but if i say okay wouldn't be like uh, height and weight right it could be right so we can't get a clear picture so this becomes a data right but if you put it to a tabular form like this now we know that the names that we have seen some students names and the the numbers that we have seen earlier is some marks or two subjects so now we have a some meaning for this but if you further process then you can actually uh, you know observe uh, things you can make decisions right it's meaningful right dolina can you like tell me like one information or one uh, uh, observation that you can make from this table uh tanuka has got 95 for the first subject yes 95 for the sub subject what else you can tell about tanuka his total is 180 okay bagya the rank of the students yes exactly now we can say tanuka is the best student in the class isn't it we can say he is the best student and sandal is the weakest student which means we can provide some help for sandali uh, right so this is because information is meaningful we can make decisions based on whatever given here if you focus on the subject marks what can you tell about subject marks dolina uh, tanuka has got the highest marks exactly but uh, when it comes to subject marks individual subjects what do you think about the subjects the first subject is easier yes exactly we can say okay first subject is easier than the second subject so you see that you can make uh, you know observations we can make uh, decisions based on this so because of this this is considered as information so we discuss when you take numbers letters words even the images videos as it is sometimes they make no meaning so which we call data but when you actually uh, you know process the data now processing means you can rearrange you can tab table it or you can for the process using performing some calculations on those data items then it becomes information right so i hope uh, now it's clear to you bagya so you can get the note from dolina dolina can you share the note with bagya later on yes yeah, sure okay 
Now, the next thing we discuss is the components of a computer system. Now, any computer system, we can identify these three things, input, process, output, right? And the very first thing that we have discussed is, what is the example, Dorina, we have discussed last time? We have uh, discussed about the teller machines, right? Yeah. So what's the last thing we have taken down in the book? In the note? Input process and output. This one, right? And have you taken down the example as well? Yeah. Yes. Fingerprint. No, only the ATM. Only, only the ATM. Right. Now, uh, back here we discuss any computer system, you can, you should be able to identify these three things. Now, when you take automated teller machine or ATM, right, we can identify inputs, outputs, and processes. Durina, can you tell me like one input when it comes to ATM? Entering the card. Yes, you can say card. You can just say card, right? You're putting a card, so card is an input. Bake, can you tell me another one? Another input? The fingerprint. Yes. Now, when it comes to ATM, so we are putting a card. What else you are going to input to the system? You put a card. What else you put? Account number. Account number, exactly. Sometimes, uh, let's say you are going to deposit, then you need the account number. Dulina, one more. Uh, how much you need cash? Yes, how much uh, cash you need. Yes, the amount. And then also the pin number, isn't it? All these considered as input to the system. Then what are the outputs, Dulina? Card. Yes, you are getting back the card. Yes, card. Bakya. Money. Yes, you are getting money. Yes. What else, Dolina? One more. Uh -huh. A receipt. Yes, you are getting a receipt, isn't it? So you are getting a receipt. So you see that. Uh, so these are the output. Okay. Now, can you tell me what are the processors? Verifying the pin code. Yes. Now you enter the card, then you put the pin number, right? Now you have to verify whether that particular pin number is related to this account number. So that's the process. Good. Bagya. Dorina, again, one more. Uh, selecting the amount of cash. No, not that one. So that means it's not really processing. You select something, it's not a processing. But when you select the cash, whether that particular amount is available in the account, check in that. So that will be a processing. right? So the processing could be you check the pin number whether it's a valid pin number if it is the so then uh, you go to the menu and you display the options available let's say you are going to get some money you put amount and then checking whether that particular amount is available in the bank or bank account is another process the third one would be like uh, when you withdraw some amount of money be before the money give it out the system should deduct that particular amount from your bank account. So the, those are considered as uh, the processors. Right. I hope now it's clear to you. Right. The next thing that I want to discuss is with the fingerprinting. Right. So, um, Dolina, 
Have you seen fingerprinting machines? Yeah. You know what a fingerprint is? Yeah. Okay. So uh, let me share a small video on this. Uh, just to make sure that uh, you know how fingerprinting works. The fingerprint, is it unique to everyone? Yes. Even the, what do you call? Uh, even for the twins? Yeah. Do you, have you heard that there are some people without any fingerprint? Yes. <laughs> And sometimes if you work with, especially if you work with chemicals, sometimes it goes away, right? Remember, so that's why nowadays we switch on to uh, uh, face recognition, right? So, but anyway, the, what we were discussing is uh, fingerprints. Uh, let me share a small video, part of a video actually. If you are interested, I can share the, the links with you. Uh, let me quickly look at Okay, now let me share. Let me know whether you can see this. Okay, can you see this screen? Yeah. I've got a call. Hello, you're through to Techno Mum's Tech Line. What's your techno question? Dad's mobile phone has a fingerprint scanner to lock and unlock the screen. How does the scanner know it's his? Oh, great question. You see fingerprint scanners on lots of devices these days, including mobile phones. Secret codes are a great way to keep things private and safe, as you'll know if you've got a combination lock on your diary or bike. Human beings are lucky because every single person alive has their own totally unique secret code on their fingers and thumbs. On each finger pad, you can see a pattern of swirls and ridges. Yours won't match anyone else's. The first time you set the lock, you let the scanner take a picture of your fingertip. Every time you then swipe your fingertip on the reader, it takes another photo and checks the first to see if they match. If they do, you're in. Sometimes electrical currents are used instead of light. Don't worry, they don't give you a shock. You might know that electricity is carried around gadgets and machines in channels called circuits. They're like roads. If there's a gap in the circuit, the electricity can't flow, just like cars can't cross a broken bridge. Some scanners use circuits which are completed or filled by the bumps of the fingerprint. The pressure activates switches, which help the device put together an image of all the ridges and can compare them to its original. Right, so that's the, the first video.
another video on how they put the fingerprint. Okay, I think we have seen how fingerprinting machines work. So let's look at how we could, uh, you know, put into three, four. Yes. Dulina, can you tell me what are the inputs will be in a fingerprint scanner? The code. Yes. Yeah, uh, that code is actually to enter in the system. So normal setting, actually, you don't have to type uh, the code. You have to put the finger on it, right? So that's what uh, we should normally use in fingerprinting machine, right? Um, so in fingerprinter, so the input, you can take it as a fingerprint. It says that it's very unique. Okay. What will be the output, Bhagya? The arrival time. Yes, uh, if it is, uh, if we know that we are focusing on uh, human resource management, HR we call, uh, where they are coming time, arrival time, their departure time, right? We can consider that as an output. So what will be the processing, Durina? Identifying the fingerprint. Yes, exactly. So now, first of all, when you put up a finger, you need to identify it. So this is very, very important. So identifying a fingerprint. So that will be the, the output, uh, sorry, the processing uh, in fingerprint scanner. Right, I think we'll take down this information. Uh, so in the note. So let me share the screen. Um, so from here, you can take down example, fingerprint is a reader and uh, input is fingerprint. And the processing is, processing means in, inside the fingerprint reader, uh, it's the identified the fingerprint and the output as uh, the bug I said earlier. So the time of arrival and at the same time departure and also like any monthly reports could be taken as uh, the outputs. Yes. Now, for example, now you are in grade 10, which means you have passed grade 9, right? So when somebody asks like, uh, what is your highest uh, uh, educational qualification? You may say that, okay, I pass. Uh, grade nine, then you don't have to tell about like whether you have passed, uh, you know, grade five or not, right? Because it says that you have passed you. When you say you passed grade nine, it means that you have passed grade eight, seven, and so on, right? They know that uh, you have passed all the others, isn't it? So when you're presenting information, make sure that the information is relevant, relevant to the and then the second one, what is the second one? Completeness. It's completeness. Now, when we talk about the information, it should be complete. Now, let's say nowadays, I don't know how in your schools, 
the attendance is half of the class, right? Is it 50 or 30, 33? 30. It's 30. Okay, 30%. All right. All uh, right. So nowadays, not everybody comes to school. Now, let's say I want to know the average marks for mathematics, right? If I just ask the students in the class, and if I take uh, their total and divide by the number of students, we'll get the average marks. Is it complete or not? If you do nowadays, whoever comes, we are going to consider. Those who are absent, we are not going to consider. So then the information, is it complete? Bhagya? No, sir. No, right? Because we are considering half of the students. It will not give, give us the exact answer. Now, if you want to know what is the average marks for mathematics in the class, we have to consider all these students. So this is called completeness. Okay, what is the third one? Third characteristic? Accuracy. It should be accuracy. Now when, when you're doing a medical test, it should be accurate, isn't it? Nowadays we have PCR test. It should be accurate. Otherwise what will happen? If the information is not accurate, what will happen? The disease will spread. Yes, in COVID, yes. Now, one thing uh, could happen is a COVID patient, but the test says negative. So, basically, it's spread. But let's say uh, it's a healthy person without COVID, but the test is positive. What will happen? Yes. What will happen? You put them into Khandakadu and the family is here, right? It will create a lot of issues, isn't it? So remember, information should be accurate, right? Now, for example, we test for different diseases and if the test results are not accurate, then we may be in trouble, right? Make sure that your information is accurate. Fourth one? Timeliness. It's called timeliness. What do you mean by timeliness? Now the weather forecast. Let's say weather forecast for tomorrow. When it is useful? For tomorrow. Yes, tomorrow's weather, is it when it is useful? Is it useful for today or is it useful for uh, yesterday or is it useful for the, another week's time? No. Huh? Now, right? Now, for example, what might happen in the coming week is interested now, not later on. Tomorrow's weather, if you get that information tomorrow, there's no real use of it. We anyway uh, get the weather you know, details. So remember, information should be uh, you know, available on the, the correct time, right? Being ready for the time being. Now, these days, we have a complaint that the PCR tests are delayed. It's a problem, right? There's a problem with the quality of information. Now, if you're a COVID-19 patient and the PCR done today, and if it takes, you know, two weeks time, there's no real use. The data should be available. Let's say if there's a death due to COVID-19 and the done a PCR, it will take uh, two weeks. Again, lot of issue, lot of issues. So the information to be useful, it should be available on time. We call it timeliness. Last one. Bagya. Cost effective. Cost effectiveness. What do you mean by cost effectiveness? Be worth the money? Yeah, worth the effort, worth the money. Now, for example, if you take COVID-19, we have rapid antigen test and the PCR test. Many times we perform rapid antigen. Why? 
yes it's uh, the cost is less than pcr test isn't it yeah. but then the accuracy will be other way around so the pcr test accuracy is higher than the rapid antigen test so since the cost involved so many of the time for low risk groups we perform rapid antigen but for high risk groups we perform pcr it's because of the cost so the information should not cost too much of money otherwise uh, it will not be very useful right i think uh, let's take down this i will share the note right let me share please take down bagya what do you think what do you mean by information and communication technology exchange of information yes one part is exchange of information that means you talk about only about the communication part of it what else you ask is partly true yes dolina once you have information yes you have to exchange with the others that's why we got the data from weather.com and we were able to you know see what will happen in the next week so that is because uh, uh, they are sending that particular information on how uh, weather changes over the week so likewise that's communication part of it so basically there's another word here we have what is missing in your answer bakya data data and information right we say information and communication technology so exchange of data means you talk about the communication yes once you have the information you have to share with the relevant uh, you know people because then only it will be useful isn't it now you get the weather uh, the reports you have to share with the farmers so they can get the benefit out of it so likewise the information now generation of information we know that uh, we will uh, collect data and then we uh, you know get the information out of this like in weather forecast we said uh, you are going to keep track of historical uh, data that means the rainfall humidity and so on and then once you process it you will get the 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 weather forecast for the next week so information creation storage and then also the manipulation so all these comes under information and communication technology so there are two parts as i told you earlier we have information is one part communication is another part so we use we talk about lot of other various technologies now how come we got the weather information from weather.com through the internet isn't it so internet is one of the technologies likewise there are other technologies we are going to learn such as emails right so we will discuss different technologies on information generation creation storage as well as how the technologies involved in communicating this so that's what we call information and communication technologies right right so the uses of ict in different fields now under that actually we are going to talk about multiple topics sub topics under this the very first one we are going to look at how uh, you know the government provide different services or different sectors like uh, services to its citizens services to business service to other governments and so on and then we will also look at how uh, ict is used in education i uh, especially now know that uh, we have uh, online learning is becoming uh, uh, you know day to day activities a part of day to day activities so the things have changed over the, the time and then health and medicine again even health and medicine has changed because of uh, ict then agriculture uh, we are using a lot of equipments technology in uh, uh, agriculture uh, and then manufacturing and industry and business yes 
heavily depend on ICT, then transportation, and finally entertainment. Right. So let me start with the e-government first. Um, so let me uh, share you some information before we proceed. Now, when you talk about the e-government, there are many things you should, uh, you know, see. Um, for example, uh, you can look at, uh, you know, the main website uh, provides for uh, under the e-government. So let me share that. Uh, so if you go to www.gov.lk, so that is the main page where we can actually enter into a official web portal of government of Sri Lanka. So if you click English, you can go inside and this is provide most of the government services uh, which provide by the uh, government of Sri Lanka. Right, if you start with uh, the information given here, like uh, for example, you see services are categorized into multiple categories here. Uh, for example, we have agriculture, banking, uh, citizens, employment, education, communications, all these information are there. And let me take uh, one or two. So let's uh, click on agriculture information available. Uh, so under agriculture life fisheries, we have first one electricity board. Uh, for example, here they will provide you a link to pay your bills online. When you click it, uh, you will, uh, you know, forward it to the CEB uh, link where you can just pay, pay the bill, right? Uh, so this is the help with the help of ICT uh, and the government provide this as a service. And then registration also, you have some information here. And then if you look at the uh, agriculture, uh, in agriculture and agriculture also, you provide some information. Uh, crop recommendation is uh, one of this information given to you. And then export agriculture, several links on, uh, you know, how to make use of this agriculture related information with uh, the persons. Then uh, fisheries, again, a lot of uh, information is given there. Rubber, technical back door. Um, let me show you like, uh, so this is a place where like they, they release daily food prices or weekly food prices and uh, very frequently. Now, for example, let's say I want to know the details wholesale price and we'll see all the prices in multiple places and if you click uh, to select proceed so let me see where i can actually find out okay view so it will give us the details so uh, this is wholesale prices uh, for different uh, you know vegetables and so on so which is very useful uh, for the farmers uh, when they sell, they know like what will be the range of, uh, you know, price you might get, right? That information is very helpful for farmers. Uh, and let me look at another one, uh, Mahavira Authority, water supply, uh, tea board, 
uh, let's say uh, T prices, see whether it's working. Yes, it's working. And then uh, I think from here we have to uh, identify what will be the prices. Right. So the so it will direct other different places here. Right. Uh, then uh, let's say uh, water resources port some information you can request and then uh, banking tax insurance uh, you can give the details of uh, different banks municipal councils some of the authority uh, some information given there as well and then citizen registrations we have uh, customs uh, you know that when you import customs usually uh, they go through this and then you have to pay, put duty and so on. So these still details are there. Right. Uh, and then elections, motor traffic. Okay. One of the thing is if you want to uh, uh, get the details from here, uh, you can get the vehicle number inquiry vehicle category yes let's see we have to car fine it says on ongoing vehicle number so now right now the latest vehicle registration number for vehicle category car is cbl you know the, the l is going right so which means you know where we are okay so if you go back to uh, let's say uh, motor bicycle motorcycle so it says the latest number is BJB. Okay, so this is uh, what they have. So that they, they have interlinked this information and it's very helpful, right? Not like in early days, things are you know, put into uh, some form using this. Then the registrations, uh, motor traffic, I told you like uh, you can get the revenue license online. Let me see whether we can get the revenue license, revenue license status. Yes, service. Okay, you can put the vehicle number. Uh, In my vehicle number let's see it's work okay so license number is there so that's my vehicle number i put it so it says the current license number as well as a date of issue and date of expiry which is uh, very uh, you know helpful right dolina can you tell uh, yours uh, vehicle number i can't remember you don't remember okay <laughs> <laughs> that's okay that's okay i just ask anyway so likewise you see now there are a lot of information given by the government to their citizens as well as other governments everything is put it here so you can have a look at it right and then let's say citizens registration what else we can have um importing cats and dogs if you're planning to getting a cat or dog from foreign country yes then you can I'll get some information uh, communication media so you can actually uh, go through this I, I think we'll go to uh, education archives buddhist affairs examination you already know so certificate now issued through this uh, e-service okay then they say tau kaliko they have temporarily closed this one maybe due to uh, covid uh, examination results that you already know. So those are also posted here, right? And DOE Nets is another one you can look at it. Department of Examination, view results, official website. Uh, so here we have results, and then this information is given here, right? Uh, and then uh, ICTA. So
so that is another place we are actually uh, they work on different aspects uh, uh, what ha they have given here is single and tamil unicode you know those uh, details are given here and then uh, employment information trade unions epf uh, etf this information is there uh, registration or re-registration of employment so those information is given here so i think uh, you can spend some time on going through the whatever the services available okay so i think let's uh, take down the uh, uh, the country so what we were doing discussing is the e-government uh, under that what we have seen is the government uh, provides us uh, different uh, electronic services to citizens there are some information for companies and other organizations so uh, the website i have given here and services they provide uh, are in four categories uh, they pro provide uh, services to uh, citizens we call g2c it's uh, me meaning of this is government to citizens uh, to other governments government to government we call g2g and then government to businesses g2b and government to employees g2e right examples also given here for citizenships uh, payments of utility bills such as electricity and water now can be done through online renewal of vehicle licenses revenue licenses we call it that is also can be done online and other governments uh, visa information and custom especially when you're ordering uh, or when you import or export in both uh, so then there are some you know information should be relevant to uh, the parties so those information are given here and businesses you know that a lot of uh, you know uh, when you want to start up a business so you have to register it first. Um, if I remember the rule, like within one week of, uh, you know, start of your business, you need to register it. And then uh, it's a, one of the services uh, given by the government to businesses. And then invest information if you have, uh, you know, more money, right? And if you are like trying to look for investments, um, the government actually uh, provide those information. And final one is called employees government to employees we call g2e uh, you know uh, government uh, you know uh, you know provide different gassets i don't know whether you remember that uh, we were discussing about the uh, the, the gasset on different food items uh, recently we have been talking about this so that some regulations are also put it there and then circulars so all these information actually provide by the government for government to employees so let's take down after taking down, uh, please let me know.
So in previous one, I have muted the sound. So here, what you have seen is uh, you can click on uh, the education publication and you can get from them as uh, uh, electronic version of the book. So most of the book, you can access it from here. And the next one is, A uh, use of multimedia, you know that a lot of education programs are developed using multimedia information. So that's uh, nothing new. Uh, and then so that's there. And then uh, you can get information on the internet. Yes, uh, we can search and Google whatever you need. You can get it uh, from there. And then you have educational games, places like eTaxalav. So let me share that for the time being and we'll finish for today. eTaxalav. Yes, we have eTaxalav. So we can go there and see what information we will have the right now for any grade so let's select grade 10 okay let's say ict and this is the course book and then question papers everything is put it here and then if you go to singhala you can even have videos so let me change the subject the language into singhala and there we can find even uh, the videos for that right we have yes you can have All right so this is uh, what we have with uh, you know education but i think the time is up for today uh, so next week we will uh, talk more on uh, the use of ict in education Right. Hari putih nama mama.